A, the 2014 Juvenile Justice Delinquency Prevention and Treatment Programs Grant. Mr. Ty. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, as you may recall, last year we were awarded our first um, grant from the CJCC for the juvenile courts to, to implement some diversion programs. Again, earlier this year, we um, were able to renew that grant and are currently still implementing the um, functional family therapy. And, and that program is aimed at what, what they consider the higher risk um, children, kind of the way it works is when, uh, when the um, offending youth comes before comes through the DJJ and the court system, they um, complete a risk assessment and there's a number score attached to that. So the ones that score um, three or higher, your higher risk kids for your, um, your you know, higher level offenses um, are appropriate for the functional family therapy. Well, those programs statewide, as they've implemented them, have, have worked so well, they've found some additional money um, and this juvenile justice delinquish delinquency prevention and treatment program grant is aimed at, at targeting some of those kids that that are on the lower risk so we're kind of not letting them fall through the cracks um, we're able to implement some programs to um, to capture those kids and their families as well so what the proposal is for for this grant is to implement a program called strengthening families um, it's a, it's similar but a little bit different than the the FFT the FFT the therapist goes actually into the home and meets one-on-one -on -one with that with that particular family um, the strength in families is a group model um, but, but basically what will happen is once the um, the youth and that are appropriate for the program we identify those low-risk youth refer them to the program um, <clears throat> once a week for 14 weeks they will come together um, both the youth and the uh, their parents um, when they come we'll, we'll the uh, grant will provide transportation to make sure that that's not a barrier for them attending the program. They'll also have a family meal where they'll sit down together. A meal will be provided. They'll eat together, and then they'll break up. The parents will go, parents will go in one room and um, <clears throat> go through go through sessions and get some parenting skills and and some of the necessary skills to kind of help them deal with with the um, the offending behavior and kind of <clears throat> help them deal with their their children while the youth is, is going to a separate room and getting the, um, the counseling programs for anger management, for substance abuse, for just making good decisions in life in general. And, uh, and then at the end, they kind of come back together and have, have a um, kind of a team building or, or they all come together and have a, have a closing session together. Um, so in a lot of the meetings we've had, leading up to kind of to figuring out what what programs we wanted to uh, implement um, getting input from from uh, Miss Evans has attended some of those meetings some some of the people in the community judge council who's in the office uh, are in, uh, in the audience and um, some of the DJJ you know parenting skills kind of the parenting aspect was kind of a recurring theme um, so we feel very very good that um, that this will be something that's that's needed um, and I've also met with um, the director of Department of Family and Children's Services, and this is something that they feel like they can maybe partner with us and kind of use at the same time, whereas we pay for some of the kids through the grant, but they may also be able to refer some of their their cases to kids that maybe haven't even, before they've gotten into the juvenile justice system, uh, maybe we can reach them early as a preventive measure, and, and DFAX has some funds that maybe they can partner and pay for some of that as well. So. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have about the grant. If you've got any questions about the programs, I'm sure Judge Council will be glad to come up and answer those. Do we have any questions? I just have one. Um, actually, perhaps the judge can answer it. Um, based on the, the previous work with the other grants and what have you, uh, with this particular grant, how do you uh, project measuring success? Okay. Well, um, Carl Vinson Institute, University of Georgia, uh, has that task. They measure the success of each county that received funding from the Department of Juvenile Justice. Last year, they rated us very highly in terms of the scoring, and they increased our grant by $105,000, made it 305 instead of 200000 Now, what they're doing with this is they are attempting to reach some of the children that commit uh, low-level of 
expenses under the PDRA that was just spoken about, free risk disposition, <laughs> predisposition risk assessment. Okay, and they look at that and they say, well, let's try to avoid these coming back later on with other offenses. That's what we're doing. We're using the same group of people that we used for the first program. We're using them at this time for the second program. Um, so this is, you know, I hope I answered your question about the assessment, but this is something that we need to, we need to continue working toward to make Lowndes County safer for everybody and to help to reach some of these youth who perhaps have not had the background that some of us have had, excluding myself. <laughs> and if I could kind of follow up on what the judge was saying, when he, the Carl Vinson Institute he talked about, what we do is part of, part of our agreement, you know, if, if this grant, if you approve the application and the application gets approved, then what will happen, just like the last one, um, once we get approved the money, we're, we're approved for the money, we'll bring a contract back that we'll enter in a contract with evidence-based associates to implement the program for us. And one of the things that they do in their implementation is they work with DJJ and the judge and they gather all the information on the kids that are going through the program, the offenses, a lot of the statistical data. Every month we, we submit a report to the Carl Vinson Institute. They compile all that, track it. And actually the kids that are going through the program, we'll track them for, for at least the next three years. And, and the success is determined if if those kids go through all that and they don't get in any more trouble, then then that's that's kind of our, our measuring stick we're looking for. We're looking for um, a, a decrease in the recidivism rate. Um, you know, every, not every one of them is going to make it. Uh, I think the number that you know, 60%. It, you know, if we have a 60% uh, reduction in recidivism, meaning that that six out of the ten kids um, don't get in any trouble anymore, then then we call that a, a success, and that's kind of the this uh, measuring state we're looking for. I appreciate it. I was just yes, seeing sir. it. There's like 35 hours per kid, mm -hmm. trying to get an idea how many families it would actually. Um, well, what we're, look, what well. we're looking at, um, based on the amount we have, um, and factoring the transportation cost, our, our goal is just from the grant fund and not counting anything that DFACS might partner, um, we should be able to fund 24 families. So in addition to the, um, I believe it's, um, I don't have the number, but I want to say it's 62 kids that are getting the functional family. So maybe 60 families already have the functional family therapy, and now we can add another 20 of the low risk. So um, for for this fiscal year, we're looking at between the two programs, 80, 80 families in Lowndes County being able to get some type of um, some type of treatment assistance through through these programs. One of the things that we do with the mayor is try to pick families with more than one child for me to uh, send them to the program so we get more bang for the buck, so to speak. Uh, you know, in other words, if I see a family that has three or four children, just like we do with FTC, we'll take these children and put them and have perhaps have three children and, you know, two parents or one parent, and therefore you get more, more you know, results. Any other questions? That's all I have for them. I just want to know how the reimbursement rate has been going. Um, it, it's, been, it's been going going very well. We haven't, <coughs> haven't really had any problems with the um, – that they ha they do make the um, reimbursement process uh, very easy. So um, unless Stephanie's got some problems that she – I think we've been been doing that pretty well. So we, we get reimbursed on a quarterly basis, so we actually just submitted a reimbursement, and usually within 30 days of us submitting the reimbursement, we – we are getting our money back. So, one other thing, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I want to thank you for Ashley Ty, <laughs> for you all allowing <laughs> Ashley to work with the court to put this together, because I could not put it together. So he has been a tremendous resource to the court. So thank you all very much. It's good. Thank you. Ashley, I have some more information to share with you about the grant. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Let's move on now.